Hello, this is Jared from Commit Quality, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can create your own web first assertions using a new update made to Playwright in version 1.39. So, before we do anything, make sure where if you're following along with this, you've gone to your package JSON and you've updated to version 1.39 of Playwright, or if you're in the future, as long as you're above this, it's all good. I'm just gonna bring over my Google Chrome tab because I wanna show you there's some release notes here. And in version 1.39, the top feature that's been added is add custom matches to your expect. And it basically says here that you can extend your playwright assertions by providing custom matches. And then these matches will only be available on the expect object. Now, if you're, if you're um, in the documentation as well, you can click see a full example here, which will take you to this tab. And it's giving you an example of how, how Playwright have extended their, uh, their expect to include a new method to have a mount. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to do something similar, but I want to um, check if the max length attribute is what it says it is on here. I can extend the matches to have a new to have max length method with it. And I'll show you step by step how I go about doing that as well. So let's jump directly into uh, our folder and at the moment all I've done is I've gone to commit quality I've got the text box that I'm going to be focusing on as a locator I'm going to add the page dot pause in as well because you may have seen already but there is no max length on here at the moment so what I'm going to do is add a page dot pause and I'm going to add it in on the fly so it hasn't actually got to stay on the site permanently but it's good enough just to test this Awesome. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a new file here and I'll put it inside tests. You could have this inside a fixtures folder or whatever you want to have it, but I'm just going to name it uh, extend assertions.ts. I'm going to go back to the documentation and I'm going to take some of the base stuff from here just so we haven't got to rewrite it all. So let's just do do this and then uh, we'll we'll build the rest up because really starting from the very base is probably best. I don't believe we're going to need page, so we'll just leave that out for now. So all these are doing is importing the necessary functions and types from Playwright test framework. So let's add some comments. So what do we want to do? We want to create a custom expect function that extends the base expect function. So what we say is basically we'd extend in expect to include the new thing we want. So to do this, I'm going to say export uh, const expect. And you'll see a lot of this is similar to the documentation um, of what we already have. However, I'm going to kind of make it a little bit smaller so we can understand things a bit more. So I'm going to say equals base expect dot extend. Okay, so this is basically, we're going to do everything inside here. So I guess the first thing we want to do is define a custom matcher. And this will be what we actually want to name our assertion. So we want to say async to have max length. And this is going to take through a few properties. So the first one is going to be the locator. Um, it's going to be of type locator, so that should start being used now. We then want to say um, what we're expecting. So let's say expected. Oh, if I could spell expected there. And that's going to be a number. And then we also want to pass through options. So like we see with everything else, it's going to be um, an optional one. And for, for this, I think I'll stick to what the base already had as well, which is normally just timeout. So you can change that if we need to. Awesome. So let's just break this down a second then. So what we're saying is we want to pass through three parameters, one which is going to be optional, which is going to be the options, which you see on basically all of the web first decisions. First is the locator, and then we want the expected. Fantastic. So let's open this up and do some work inside here. So the first thing we want to do is add a Boolean to say, it was it a pass or fail? So let's say let pass, and that's going to be a Boolean type. So it'll be true or false. So that's going to tell us if it's failing or not. And then we also want to add a matcher result, which um, is basically a variable that's going to store the result of our matcher. And that's if an error occurs, basically. So let's say matcher result. And of course, you can name this whatever you want. Let's put that of type any. And we want to do a try catch just similar to what we have in the documentation. So if I kind of jump screen because I can't actually see the documentation at the moment, you've got 
Um, here you've got your was it a pass, true or false? And you've got the matcher here. And they've got this try catch, which is going to try and see if it passes. If it does pass, we'll set it true. Else, catch the exception and uh, set pass to false. And then we can log some messages. So let's say try. And uh, let's add a comment here just so it makes a bit sense, even though I just talked about it. This one is where it's attempting to check if the element has a max length attribute with the expected value. So exactly what we just talked about, I'm just adding a comment. So if you're looking back to this, you know what's going on. So we'll say await base expect. And here is where we want to pass through the locator. And we're going to say, use the to have attribute. And uh, we'll pass through what we want it to be. So this attribute is just what would be on your web page. So inside the elements, so in my case, it's going to be max length. And then we also want to say, okay, let's convert it to a string and bring through the expected. So this is saying, let's assert that there's an attribute called max length and it has the expected string that we'll end up passing through from our test call. And of course, we don't want to forget the options, which are, are how we can change the timeout variables. We could pass that through here and that's going to update the options on this one, which would increase the timeout there or decrease it depending on what you wanted to do. So that's as basic as that. And then all we have to do here is set pass to be equal to true. And basically what this one is saying is uh, set pass to true if above line passes or succeeds. Awesome, so that's our try. And let's add our catch into here then. So we'll say catch, we'll exception of type any. And then here then we just, this is just to say if an error occurs, catch and handle. So we can say uh, match a result. So this is where we're going to use the match result results. This is where we're going to want some information. So we'll set that to the exception of match a result. So that'll just store the result of the matcher. And we want to also set pass to false. I'm not going to comment those because it's basically the same um, of what we've talked about. So because the check failed, pass now has to be false. So that would be the very basics of if we want to add this in, this is how we could work with it. However, now what we want to do is we want to add a message. So we want to basically, uh, let's add it, create a message based on pass or fail. And this is where I wanted to really cut down um, the amount of code we had in the example here compared to what we're going to do. So for pass, really, we don't we don't really worry too much about the message. Let's say create a constant called message and we'll say um, set that to pass. And then we'll use a ternary and we'll say if if it's passed, we'll just add it. We will just say pass in here for now because that's, that's good enough. You could leave that empty or you could add more context completely what you want to do with it. However, let's say, okay, if it hasn't, this is where we want to add some extra kind of login about what, what we actually want to see. So I'll say this dot utils dot match a hint. And this is going to give us our kind of hint to say, okay, this is what failed. So in our case, we're just going to take the to have max length because that's the method that failed. And the other two properties, we'll just leave them both as the undefined for now. So received, we'll put undefined and we'll put undefined for the expected as well. Um, just to make it a little bit tidier, let's add a empty line on this as well. So we'll say new line. So we'll end up, you'll end up seeing the error message in a second, but it'll basically say this failed. And then we're going to add a bit more context on another line, which is going to give us our expected and our um, actual. So what we could do is add a plus here. Let's do a line underneath just to make it a little bit more presentable. And now I'm going to say this can be whatever message you want as well. So in my case, I'm just going to say the expected was um, this dot utils dot print expected. So this is going to be what the expected result was. And in here, of course, we want to have expected. Outside of our string interpolation, we want to say received. So I could say received. 
and it'll be the exact same thing. So tell you I'm gonna gonna be a bit lazy with this. I'm gonna copy that part and we'll just change what we need to. So we say received, print received. And of course we want to say here match.actual. So we are match a result dot actual and that's gonna print out it, it, what the actual response was, whether it was null, whether it was a different value or anything else. So that looks all good to me. And the only thing left to do really on this then is to return what we want. So I will add a comment to say, but this is basically return the object with information about the assertion. So in this case, we're gonna say return set that in and first of all we want the message so which is going to be the generated message we just saw whether it's on pass or fail so this that's all good there we'll say return if it was a pass or fail so that's all good we've got the name which is going to be the name of our matcher so in this case it's uh, to have max length so let's copy that again um expected value we're going to return the expected value and of course the actual value if it's available because it might not always be available which means we're going to say match a result question mark say if it's available return it and we've got actual there so just to break it down this is the message we've generated up here this is the name of the matcher this is the expected value and if we have the actual which i need to actually type correctly that is that is what we're going to do. So I save that. All this should be okay now. So let's go into the actual uh, test file itself and let's let's try it out. So we import in here from Playwright Test, but because we've extended this, because this is basically just a fixture file, we can actually um, remove this and we'll import. Actually, we'll keep the test part and we'll just import from where we need to. So let's get rid of this part and uh, now then we should say extend assertions. And of course, we also want to extend from, we want to import the expect module as well. So let's give this a go. Let's say await expect. Uh, we got that. So we got text box here because we've already got the locator. This is just going to be the locator we've got from here. So in here, you could have just copied this in if you wanted to. Um, since I already added, I'll just keep that in there. So we've got expect text box. And now we should now see a two have max length. Awesome. I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll just make this up because we know there's not one at the moment. We expect this to fail. We'll put the page.pause before it, but let's comment it out for a minute and let's just see it failing. I won't say MPX playwright test. We won't put it in headed mode. We'll just let it fail outright and we'll go through all the steps. So, like I said, there is no max length at the moment. There's no attribute. So, we should see an error message basically saying that it's null and we expected 10. So let's scroll up a little bit on this. And here we are, we've got test timeout, expected, received to have max length expected. So that was the first part of that error. And then the second part of the message, we've got expected 10, but we received null. So perfect, that's what we expect. Let's now use the page.pause. And I'm actually gonna put it in headed mode, and I'm gonna make a change to the, to the element. So let's bring that over. And let's bring that over as well. And now if we inspect this and just manually add max length, so I'll say max length equals, let's say 11, just see a fail in, then we'll redo it with a passing. So let's continue through it. You can already see it's retrying everything for us, an expected value of 11. So you can kind of work out that the error message shown is expected 10 received 11. Let's redo it one more time. Let's bring these back over and let's just see in it passing so we know it's all good and we're happy with the change we've made. Max length equals 10. Let's run through it and immediately all passed. You can see one passed, all looking good. And of course, if I was to just copy this a minute and undo everything just to prove this expect doesn't exist and it's something we've just added i'll put it back to import from playwright test let's copy all of this again and here you can see that expect doesn't have oh it's been one second so i'd expect in there and you can see now expect doesn't have to have my 
max length because that's not something that exists and it's something we just added ourselves. There we are. Doesn't appear. And it's just as easy as that. Now, one thing I will touch on as well is you may need to add more of these. You might already have existing fixture files, and that's something Playwright have done as well. They've shown you in the release notes here how you can merge your test fixtures as well. So uh, it's, 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 it's very self-explanatory with this. However, if there are people who think that it's very useful for a video, please drop a comment below because I'll create a video, a follow-up video on this to show how we can kind of merge all our test fixtures together so it keeps it, so you can keep them separated, but then it all comes back into one nice place. Personally, I think this is a fantastic update by Playwright. And of course, you're going to see what you need to do in your own unique individual project. But if you do have any questions or comments, please drop them down below. A like and subscribe is appreciated. I have also enabled super thanks. So if, if you're enjoying my videos and you find them useful, you can donate and um, help support the channel by doing that. As always, thank you for watching. Have a good day.